What's up guys, I'm Austin. I'm Trev. And we're from Glory Visuals, a film production company based out of Omaha, Nebraska. And in our last video, we unboxed the new Nanlite 60C, as you can see right here next to me. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over several of the attachments that you can buy for the FM mount system. Get into it. All right, what do we got first? First is the Manlight FL11. All righty, this is a Fresnel lens. For those of you who uh, haven't heard of a Fresnel lens, it's basically an adjustable um, spot to flood lens that you throw in front of the light that can increase your intensity as well as help you narrow the beam of your lens. Look at this fancy little bag we got here. Okay, well, okay. Pouch. It's padded know, on the bottom. Y'all know we like Nanlite's bags over here Heck at Glory yeah. Visuals. Dang, that thing is tiny. Look at that. As with all of the uh, stuff for the 60C, this thing is just minuscule. Look at that. So this is a Fresnel lens, like I said. And so as you can see, as you, wow, that's insane. Look at how this <laughs> mechanism works. This is literally blowing my mind. This is like the Sigma 18 to 35 level coolness right here. Look at this. Yeah. It expands in both directions. That's sick, actually. This thing goes from 45 degrees all the way down to a 10 degree beam angle. So I'm gonna throw this on the light and show you guys what this does. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we have it on the light now. This is fully zoomed in, and so I'm actually gonna flip this around onto the wall behind me so I can show you guys. Okay. It just looks cooler with a. Okay, so as you can see on the wall behind me, that's a pretty small spot. And then as we open this up here, it gets to be a little bit softer, wider flood. And so um, if I were you know, a little bit further away from the wall, you would see a little bit bigger of a difference. Actually, Darren, why don't you show us this from... All right, so Darren's gonna spot this in for us. Currently, this is all the way flooded. This is from probably about 10 feet away from the wall behind us here. And so this is at full flood. And then as he zooms in to full spot, as you can see, it's a pretty small um, little spot. So really that's it for a Fresnel lens. It just increases your output as well as zooming in um, your beam angle essentially to be a little bit more spotlighty. This can help control if you're you know, trying to shoot this into a reflector from a little bit further away, it just gives you more control. And then it also comes with these nifty little barn doors, um, which are made of metal, it seems. Um, they feel really nice. And so if we clip these on. So with those on, you just get a little bit better control over shaping your light. Um, really just if you wanted to cut it out from hitting me, for example. So if you flip open that right one now, you'll be able to see a little bit, I guess not because it's, it's all the way spotted, but so as you can see right now, that's hitting me just a little bit. And then if he moves those barn doors in, it gets rid of that. And so that's really just to help shape the light um, and uh, really cool attachment. So there you have it. There's your Fresnel lens. What is next? Next up, we have the softbox for this light. So you might all know what a softbox does, but it's just taking your light source and making it softer, spreading out the light, diffusing the light. And this, just like everything with the 60C, is just a cute little mini version. Comes in a nice man light bag, of course. Great packaging, always. That's our first softbox by Nanlite. Oh yeah, it is. Last, last look at the Fresnel with the barn doors attached. Again, super compact, fits super nicely into this little case here. Just a little drawstring bag and uh, that's perfect. All right, now we got a soft box. Nice. Yeah, check that thing out. This is the one I'm definitely most excited for um, because I think a lot of the use cases for this light will actually be 
uh, using it as a face light in a situation where you're moving, um, where you can't, a lot of the productions we're working on, really none of the productions we're working on, are we able to set up uh, an entire wall of source light so that someone can travel 20 feet and be in good lighting the entire time. Typically we're working on the fly, we don't have multiple days for a shoot, and so something that we can pop a softbox on, have somebody even hold on a boom up overhead and light our character's face as they're walking um, or moving into a situation with changing lighting, um, I think that will be the biggest use case for this softbox. Um, in addition to using it as a backlight, um, it'll be super easy to throw this on a boom with a little softbox and get a nice softened um, edge light or hair light. And so those are kind of the two main use cases I can see here, um, but let's open this bad boy up. What is going on here? Okay, there we go. It does. Yeah, so it pretty much is reminiscent of any of your speed ring soft boxes if you've used any. I'm not sure if this is just how they look, but I believe all of these are plastic, which is fine. Um, I would have hoped to have metal tabs here. Um, we'll see how these plastic ones hold up over time. Um, but most of the other soft boxes I've seen in this style use metal for the pins and then these things that lock into those. I believe these are plastic. So um, not a big deal, but I would wonder, you know, with heavy everyday usage, um, how much this would hold up. But we'll have to let you guys know as we test these, as we use them on set, um, we will do a full review and we'll let you know how they held up over time. Um, but again, it's not super big, not super heavy. This is a small light and so uh, it's not necessarily something that you need a lot of heavy duty materials for. This does also come with a Bowens mount adapter. Um, so by default, it comes with the FM mount ring here, but it looks like you can swap these out if you want uh, by just removing a couple of screws here on this side, popping this out, and then replacing these screws into this from the other side. And so um, not something I would probably do. We have a, a softbox similar size to this that is already Bowens mount, so probably would just leave the FM mount on this bad boy. But let's throw it on the light. Now our light is diffused. I don't know if you can really tell what color that is, but yeah. All right, and now you have, oh, here's the secondary layer of diffusion for the inside. I would probably add this um, just because you do still get a little bit of a hot kind spot of, here in the yeah, middle. Yeah, good point. Um, but the, I will say the, the fabric that comes with this light does feel very nice. Um, it, it feels quality. Some of the soft boxes that you get have really cheap, um, well, that's actually more what I was thinking this would be. This must be a thicker diffusion. Does it say in here? It does not say. I'm assuming this is for a little bit more output as opposed to softness. And then this one is a, a little bit thicker, kind of silk feeling material. And so um, you just get both of those options, which is really nice. So yeah, this is the softbox. And again, one of the primary use cases for this would be either hand holding or throwing it onto a boom pole and booming up over your, your talent, obviously using probably CCT mode instead. So using this as your key light on the go. It's nice. Somebody just able to kind of stand right behind camera, hold this up, walk mm -hmm. backwards, uh, walk backwards with your talent, or you could vlog with it, you know? Yeah. Just hold that. Peter McGrippin style, <laughs> just hold that bad boy, <laughs> just right here, and then hold your camera with the other hand, yeah, the and you got light just perfect lighting, no matter where no matter you go. Where you go. Um, but yeah, this is sick. Really excited for the ability to just walk around. I mean, the ability to walk around with a key light is pretty sweet. That's insane. Um, and that doesn't even take into account that it's full RGB color controlled and you can do any color with this that you want to. So, moving on. Thanks, What's Nan Light. Thanks, Nan Light. Next is the projection attachment. Beautiful. Here. And this one is kind of dual purpose with the Fresnel to some degree. 
Uh, really, the main purpose of this is to create uh, a spotlight beam. So what's different about the spotlight attachment is it actually has internal cutters. Um, and so what you can do with this light that we'll demonstrate here in just a second is you can actually create slices of light or you can control very precisely uh, where you want your light to hit. So say I wanted to shoot this light into a four foot bounce board that's across the room. I could use these cutters that are built in to shape it to exactly that square instead of having a bunch of light spill and then I need to put up flags and I need to do all this extra stuff. Um, so that's just one practical use, but also if you're you know, lighting a subject's face and you wanna emulate just a slice of light coming in through the window or something like that, uh, this would be the attachment that you would wanna use. And it also has all these cool um, gobos and accessories that it comes with. So let's go ahead and throw this bad boy on. And with this one, it is heavy. Um, these elements inside are real glass. And so uh, this one actually weighs more than the light itself. And so what it does is it gives you its own um, internal yoke so that way you're not again putting so much weight on the front end of the um, of the light because these mounts are not as good not as sturdy as Bowen's mount so let's go ahead try that out let's see if it works with the grip still so now we have our spotlight attachment just like with the uh, Fresnel it does have a lens that slides in and out and so you can kind of focus the beam so let's flip this around here um, on the wall. Pretty much the lens is just to focus the beam or, or defocus the beam. And so what I was talking about with these um, cutters here is if I had this all the way focused in, I can use these. To just literally create a thin strip of light if I wanted to or just just a little it's a little square of light if I wanted to, if I so desire. Like um, a slice on like my foot Yeah. It looks so sick over there. Here it comes. <laughs> right in the eye. So like so, if I wanted to do something like that, um, this gives the ability to do that, which is really, really cool. Super uh, sick. In addition, cyborg. you look pretty cool. Yeah, you look, you look pretty sick. Not quite like Cyborg, but maybe if we made it red or something. So that's one use. And then it also comes with these. these things, which are sick. So cool. So I these, I believe, design in these. I think we need one of these for that. Yeah, probably. I think they slide into here, or what's this for? Uncertain. Let's try. You can see Let's find design. out. Look at that. That's one. Let's see. So there's a couple different um, ways to attach these. This one looks like it's a filter that drops into the front, and then this one actually drops in where the cutters are. So let's find out how these work. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. If we rotate this back around. Okay. So this is where. Does this drop in here? Nope. Does this drop in here? Yes, okay. So if we spin this back, oh. Spin this back around. Let's open up our cutters here. And then if we throw one of these guys in here. Are there different sizes of them? Maybe. What does it say right here? Oh, what's this thing? Not entirely sure. This is NGO2, that's NGO1. Okay, so this one fits. I feel like it's supposed to fit in that one too. Anyways, so this one looks like it's a, a window blinds filter. That's sick. So if we drop this in, here in front of our cutters, and then refocus. Wow. And refocus our lens here. What a cool effect. You could do, you know, like the sun's coming in through the blinds, and there's a curtain, and 
so on and so forth. So kind of sick. I think Pretty this cool. would be great to just like shoot onto the background of somebody for an interview setup or something like that. Mm -hmm. Seen a lot of people doing that. Um, so that's our window blind. I'm gonna open these up one more time. So are these the same then? I don't know, I couldn't figure that I out. I feel like they're I supposed to be the same. So you can do more than one maybe? Just this one is like not... Not loosened down here? I don't know why this one drops in just fine right into the middle, but that one does not. All right, let's try our next one. Which is like a fake tree branch. I probably wouldn't use most of these focused in like that. It would probably be more like this. And then I would, I don't know, do something like that mm. to make it not look like a circle. So you'd have to, you know, make these look realistic on set, but they're pretty cool though. I mean, even if you're just going for like a textured background, um, something that's gonna be out of focus, then you could easily use any of these. Next is this little starburst window filter I've seen. Saw one guy use this uh, as like a fake stained glass window, which is kind of cool. That is neat. And I would assume you could probably make anything you wanted, um, even just cutting it out of black paper and you probably could throw it in front of the lens and it would probably look cool. And then lastly, just the sun shooting through some summer leaves on the trees, but not that color. Hmm. There we go. So, I mean, this would be kind of cool, right? That would be cool. Oh yeah, it's a great effect. Oh wait, this one might have a smaller opening. Oh. Yep. Oh. I don't know why. Unsure on the purpose of that, but. Okay. But I think we could drop. Noted. Drop both of these in or not? Yeah, nice. Interesting. That's kind of cool. So you can stack them, so that's sick. Uh, this guy, I'm assuming, is just to hold gels, uh, which I will never use because the 60C has gels built into it uh, or any no, no. color that you would want. So, But if you are using this on the 60B, um, then this would be great because you need that to be able to change it to a color. Um, so yeah, that's nice that they included that. So let us know, guys, of these products that we unboxed and reviewed today, which one are you most likely to use on set? Which one is your favorite? Which one can you see the most practical use from? It's a great question. My favorite is the softbox. It's... Mm. We'll use the softbox most often, but I think I'm most excited to play around with the projection attachment for sure. If you like this unboxing, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be putting out more Nanlite products and unboxings, reviews, real world examples of how we're implementing these products on set. So be sure you hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future content. And until next time, I'm Austin. I'm Trev. And we'll see you in there.